Food, hygiene, exercise, family, recreation, freedom, all at maximum issues. And six people out there are thinking that, hey, you know what? This ain't so bad. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the Spiffing Brit, and today we're here in the fantastical world of Prison Architect. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth am I doing here? We haven't seen a Prison Architect video since the fantastic adventures of setting up a tea plantation. I mean, what on earth other issues could exist in prison? An architect. Well, it turns out there are several million to be discovered. And in fact, today's exploit is so entertaining, I had to drop everything that I was doing just to record it because of how silly it is. I absolutely love it. The exploit in question is a very simple one. Basically, we're able to duplicate the amount of wardens you can have in the game. This is very useful because wardens each come with special unique bonuses, which allow the system to be glitched in a very large number of ways, be it making infinite quantities of money to just simply suppressing a prisoner so much that they've realized that they don't actually want food and should probably stop complaining about starvation. All of these war crimes and more are about to be discovered, so make sure you're sat back, relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea, as we're about to find out if Prison Architect is a perfectly balanced game with no exploits, or if perhaps the Infinite Warden's glitch could be considered to destroy much of this game's functional reality. So how do you think Spiff's going to absolutely break Prison Architect today? Do you think A, he's going to suppress prisoners so that they actually don't worry about starvation. Do you think B, he's going to destroy the Geneva Convention in multiple different ways, all of which more devilishly evil than the last? Or C, do you think he's going to generate infinite money by making prisoners commit crimes? Or D, do you think he's going to do basically all of that because he is absolutely insane? Hop down to the comment section and vote and you might actually be right. The winner this week receives one entire spiff token, which only becomes redeemable once I take over the entire world. So what we're going to do ladies and gentlemen is create ourselves a new prison and hopefully one which is perfectly balanced. So if we're going to be duplicating wardens you can probably guess what's going to be happening here. You see in this game there are six different wardens. There's the warden, the most balanced individual on the planet and you know what this game's not wrong because he's so balanced in fact that whilst you can exploit and duplicate him you have absolutely no reason to do so because he provides no bonus. Well I suppose he'd increase your research speed but is research speed really Really that important? No, it's not. The persecution of prisoners, however, now that's what I'm interested in. Which is exactly why people like Rita are so special. Because Rita has the likelihood of prisoners being stoical or fearless, meaning that if we have two of Rita, it makes it impossible for us to receive prisoners who are stoical or fearless. Also, prisoners are suppressed twice as quickly. What this actually means is that if a prisoner was in the process of preparing to start a riot, the moment they catch a glimpse of a guard, it's enough to immediately suppress all of their negative opinions. It's kind of like me and T. You might put me in the most horrible and upsetting location in the world, like Wales, but if you give me a cup of tea, I'm sure I'll forget all about it. There's also the lobbyist, who basically if you have two of, you won't get any dangerous prisoners. JW Periwinkle, who if you have two of, it means every time a dog walks over a piece of grass, they're instantly going to discover a tunnel if there is one. The pacifier, who's my personal favorite, who basically reduces the overall temperature of your prison, making inmates much less likely to cause trouble. And finally, the Lady of Infinite Wealth, it's Safara Aknova. She receives a small cut of around about two to four dollars for the resale value of each piece of contraband we find on a prisoner, and prisoners found with contraband will be fined directly from their savings, which is absolutely hilarious. What this basically means is we can give prisoners jobs like being a janitor, and then also deliberately give them easy access to contraband, and then generate infinite quantities of money by simply having multiple Safaras. Anyway, it's probably time that I actually show off how this exploit works. And I think we'll get on to infinite money later on. For the time being, it's time for us to take a look at the pacifier. And then with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to jump into this game. Remember, we've got failure conditions enabled, we're going to be generating forests, but most importantly, we're playing the pacifier. So, welcome to the game, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. It's a beautiful world, and our eight workmen have arrived to start building our lovely prison. And naturally, when it comes to building a lovely prison, all that we need to do is just copy and paste pre-built things all over the place. I mean, who actually needs to build themselves a prison. It's much easier to steal it really. So we're going to need ourselves a lovely utility room, slap bang around about here. And most importantly actually to pull off this exploit, a couple of offices would be very useful. I do realize that I have actually accidentally constructed a rudimentary girthy furnace, but it's just sadly something which is exceedingly common to 
to happen in Prison Architect. Then of course we'll need a kitchen, which will be attached to a canteen, which in turn can be attached to a common room, and then the common room will have a number of shared cells basically whacked onto the side of it. This is going to allow for infinite prisoner capacity. Oh, also don't forget the massive holding cell I'm going to build. Lovely stuff. Now the way this exploit works is relatively simple, but in order to get the most out of it, we're going to actually want to set ourselves up a basic and rudimentary prison. For that, of course, make sure to grab some basic grants to steal money off of the government for doing basically nothing, and then set up the rough establishment for our prison. There we go, it's actually starting to look quite good. We've got some basic holding cells going. Our electricity has started nicely. Ah, this is all fantastic. I'm absolutely loving this. How oh, cool, the prisoners have actually arrived. I wasn't expecting them to rock up this soon, but it's fine. We've actually got the means to keep them in under control, so for that we're going to need to basically hire ourselves five guards so they don't get assigned duties, and then we can probably completely have a staff room bonus. Oh my goodness, what is this? Why have they installed free jail doors here? Oh, what did I do? What did I accidentally build here? This is disgusting. I just built a staff room for the staff because evidently they need it, considering they built this monstrosity. Dump this, dump this, and then hold this one open. Goodness, what an absolute mess of doors. <laughs> We've also just got capacitors lying around on the floor. This is one disgusting open prison. Anyway, the new prisoners have just arrived. So what we're also going to need to do is hire ourselves two cooks to help assist with the actual cooking process. So there we go, cook one and cook two. And then that means we've actually completed the government grant and got ourselves a bunch of money. Now another thing we actually need to do is buy ourselves a warden just so that uh, we can immediately fill out the bureaucracy side of things. And now that we have ourselves a warden and an accountant, we can make sure to pick up ourselves cell block A, which is basically just give me infinite wealth because what you can do is you can just convert your holding cell. Uh, this is a little pro tip here. Just convert your holding cell into a dormitory and then just really increase your prisoner capacity and then I can build myself a few more shared cells just for that sweet sweet increased capacity because that's all I care about. More space for more prisoners. You know what that means? It means more money ladies and gentlemen. And that's what we here at Spivco love. Tightly compacted prisoner dormitories violating basic human rights and the Geneva Convention when it comes to spaces but you know what just doesn't matter. You know this has actually been a pretty decent start up. We've got ourselves our lovely prison running, we've got our warden, we've got a nice bit of cash in the bank. Uh, the only thing that we really could do with is having a few more prisoners, so yeah, I think we're taking a full intake, which will be fantastic, just to fill up to capacity of 20 prisoners, because the more money we make, trust me, the better, and they're going to be arriving very soon as well, which is fantastic for us. Anyway, now time for the fun little exploits to begin. So for this, we're going to need to hire ourselves a psychologist so that we can get a feel for how our prison is actually feeling, and of course for that, our psychologist is going to need an office. Now, when it comes to actually seeing how dangerous a prison is, the way we keep track of it is basically by having a danger level. This allows us to keep track of prisoners' needs, and at the moment we can see that 11 of our 19 prisoners say that they are well treated, and also our warden is having a calming effect. This is, however, going down because, as you've guessed, it's now gone from 11 to 9, mostly because the prison is messy, there's untouched food lying around and about, and we actually don't have that many guards for the amount of prisoners we're going to end up having, which is... 40. Yeah, we've got 20 prisoners arriving tomorrow. This is uh, going to be very interesting. Admittedly, a lot of them are just medium security and minimum security, so they're not the most dangerous prisoners, but still. We've got people like Sean Martin here, who's committed manslaughter twice and is in here for the next 38 years. Oh, and fantastic, here comes our new prisoners. Lovely stuff. Look at that. Now we have so many prisoners and hardly any guards to actually look after them. In fact, I don't even know if we have enough food to feed them all. But you know what? It doesn't actually matter because what we're going to start doing now is as soon as the prison danger level gets too high we're simply going to uh, destroy th this game's balance. Oh I love it. So as I mentioned of course our warden being the pacifier has a special bonus where he has a nice calming effect on the prisoners. Basically he goes on to the little prisoner tunnel and goes this is a prisoner announcement uh, whilst none of you have been fed for the last four days I just want you to know everything's fine and you should remain calm whilst most of you don't have access to basic exercise needs, the yard is tiny and compacted, and there aren't enough guards to keep you safe from being shivved in the shower room. Everything is fine. <laughs> oh, I love this game. I really do. It's fantastic. And you know what? Other fun things we can do. Uh, we can change up our policy, for example. The moment it currently costs us $456 a day to feed prisoners, so we're going to uh, actually scrap that. We're going to have no meal variety and low meal quantity. This means uh, it's only going to cost us $1 a day to feed 
feed each prisoner, which is basic, uh, basically illegal, but it's fine. Perfectly fine. It's going to increase our cash flow, and that's what I like to see. We've gone from feeding them a nice, healthy, balanced diet of a bit of bacon and some greens and some mash to it's, it's just going to be potatoes, really. That's all I'm interested in. We're going to run out of bacon very quickly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and it would appear uh, what a snitch was just murdered. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because uh, one slight issue, uh, he was ex-law enforcement, um, and so naturally that's caused an issue. Now the danger level is rising because prisoners have suppressed complaints. Um, one prisoner has been killed, six prisoners have been unnecessarily searched. You know what? Let's crank it up. Let's just do a, a full shakedown. Shakedown everything. We're going to need a couple more guards for this. So we're going to have our eight guards search everyone, and what this is going to do is it's going to absolutely crank up the danger level, which it should be lovely but of course we're going to want to absolutely suppress our prisoners to the point where even though we're going to be treating them horribly the warden will have a calming effect lowering the overall danger level so how are we going to do that well we're going to hire another warden but if i actually try and click i have the maximum amount hired already as you can see one out of one warden so what you do is you click on your warden here and you hit sack now what that means is our warden has been sacked and if we check our staff list we've got zero out of one warden available what we can then actually do is also click on him again Again, and then hit sack. Now if we check staff, we have minus one of one warden available. Oh no, ladies and gentlemen, it's an underflow. Yep, and then we can hit him again, and now it's minus two, and again, and it's minus three, and now it's minus four, now it's minus nine, now it's minus ten. So we can buy ten of these bad boys. They only cost $200 per day, but trust me, they're going to do more to suppress the prisoners than any guard actually will. So we're just going to keep on sacking our warden, simply because we can, and there we go. We should now be at around about minus minus 20 lovely stuff and so what we're now going to do is we're going to hire the warden a bunch of times there we go they're all going to need offices but don't worry it's fine so we've gone from having one warden to now having 21 wardens all of which supplying a suppression debuff to our prisoners so it's time for us to actually quick build these guys some offices because trust me we're going to need them in them uh, instead of being defended by actual officers uh, they're simply going to get defended by the incredible suppression effect of a million wardens there we go. They're sitting in their little offices having a fun time. These guys aren't exactly very happy at the moment. They apparently don't have a good environment. Their spirituality is terrible. They want to see their families. Uh, the danger level is rising. It's still quite low, but it is rising. And that's because we need to get these wardens in their offices. It is of critical importance that we get these boys in. There we go. Danger level is decreasing. Lovely stuff. And it's decreasing even more. Oh, fantastic. And we're back down to low. Despite the fact uh, that <laughs> the prisoners haven't exactly been having a fun time, I suppose of late. Oh, this is it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You know, I realize we're also going to want a psychologist just so that we can see how much we can ruin the prisoner's day and still have them have a smile on their face. Anyway, it's time for more bureaucracy to be put down. I think that's a few more offices for our wardens, although we are still actually going to need more. If you can believe it, this isn't enough. So here we have it. The offices are getting constructed and the wardens are going in. And with that, every time a warden goes into an office, our danger level decreases just one step further. Now, of course, they will be a bit rowdy until we get all of these wardens in, but the progress is being made. The danger level is at medium. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is silly. They're all currently on a little break at the moment, but just look at how many offices there are. Is that it? Does every single warden have an office? Yes, they do. Right, now we want to hire ourselves a psychologist just so that we can see how the prisoners are feeling so let's go over to uh, their needs and oh wow they are they're, they're not happy they're really not happy <laughs> their safety is not very happy there's another prisoner dead uh, he was a snitch so that's kind of fair game oh my goodness this is incredible right, wardens you should be suppressing them harder you know more more suppression keep them feeling suppressed ah oh, lovely this is perfect so yes uh, a bunch of prisoners aren't very happy at the moment but it kind of doesn't matter we're just going to be doing shakedowns about every single day so that we can uh, really really hammer home the uh, the freedom uh, that they're not going to be experiencing just for fun really because it cranks up the temperature uh, which is fantastic for us 22 prisoners are shackled in their cells or in solitary perfect that's going to really crank up the uh, the upset that's what i like to see you know i wonder if we can just lock down all of them let's just lock down all shared sectors they're no longer allowed out of their cells and let's see just how long we can uh, we can keep them in there without them getting too upset now of course they're going to be a bit confused 
confused because uh, they're gonna need food soon. Yep, a couple of them are reaching critical food level, but it's all fine because nine prisoners still believe that they're being treated well. This experience is treating at least nine of them fine. I don't know how. Oh, this is good. So uh, we're gonna see a couple more issues. A lot of them want freedom. A lot of them want fresh clothing. And there we go. I'm pretty sure the temperature is at maximum. Danger level is high, but the warden's calming effect is stacking on top of everyone else now so that hopefully they're feeling the soothing, soothing voice of the warden going through their ears right now as they are slowly starved to death in their cells. I'm amazed that they haven't actually had a riot yet. The danger level is decreasing apparently. It's decreasing. They haven't been fed in over a day and the danger is going down. This makes no sense. <laughs> there we go. Danger level's now at medium. It's at medium. Things have never been better in the prison actually. There is no freedom. Oh my goodness. Food is really an issue. Oh my god. 35 prisoners are furious that they haven't actually been fed in a couple of days now. We're approaching day 8 and uh, these guys are doing good. A couple of them are cranking up that starving beater at the moment. They're really getting close to it. They just aren't going to fight back at all. That is actually our first fight back. One prisoner has finally broken and they are now having a fight. It's only taken until now and our first fight has happened. All in all, I'd say this has gone fantastically well. We're in a lovely situation where the prison uh, should work perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, yes. But they're surprisingly being very relaxed about it. Um, even the people who are slowly bleeding out to death sat in a cell which is kind of on fire almost. <sighs> what a brilliant situation. Um, <laughs> day nine. No prisoners are yet to to die of starvation. All prisoners not feeling the happiest at the moment. Mostly because it is meant to be yard time and there's not much yard time actually happening. Mostly thanks to just this hype squad of wardens running about there. Basically pitch black offices bumping into things. Just basically saying everything is fine. All the issues are over now. Please remain indoors. And you know what? It's actually working very well. I mean this is a war crime. This would instantly cause effectively a riot if you were doing this in any other situation. In Prison Architect, this is a riot. No food, they're gonna riot. No family, they're going to riot. No exercise, they're going to riot. But no food, no exercise, no family, no recreation, no hygiene. When there are 21 pacifiers just hyping up the prison system in their little offices, well, I mean, who could be mad at the prison system? It certainly sounds perfectly fair to me. So we're approaching day 10 and these prisoners are still pretty well relaxed and happy. So apparently the setup we have is actually incredible because if you look at this, this is Richard Lovegrove here. Whilst he has seen zero reform, he has had exceedingly incredible punishment because he has spent 51% of his stay locked up. He's also had some insane security. This means that his estimated reoffending chance is 24%. So if we just keep him in here for another three years and release him, this man is going to give our prison a positive review view, if you can believe that. There we go, day 11, much again the same, these prisoners are starving but feeling pretty chill about it all. Honestly, things are looking good. Privacy is still an issue, drugs is an issue, alcohol is an issue, Ooh, someone's freedom got solved, why, why is that? Nine prisoners are currently dealing with this, okay, are they currently, they're currently trying to escape, is that it? Are they currently feeling like an escape is a good idea? Honestly, everything's looking pretty good here. I'm actually very well surprised by how happy everyone is, we've had a couple of you know, isolated instance where prisoners have destroyed their beds, but beyond that, everyone's looking pretty chill. And I mean, I'm just going to say, these prisoners have acted really calmly considering they haven't had access to food for almost an entire week now. I mean, if I don't have access to tea after like 30 minutes, I'm probably ready to break through an entire metal door and then escape whatever confines I find myself in. So, for these prisoners to have this level of suppression, I must say, I'm very impressed. Oh, and there we go, there's our first death. James Chotofish Tan has just starved to death. What a shame. Five days without instant, that lovely guy. What a shame. What a shame. He had no misconducts whatsoever. He just arrived in the prison for eight days and spent 90% of it in lockdown. <laughs> look at how suppressed he was. My goodness. Look at their experience. Condition. None and suppressed. Mood bad. <laughs> this is a maximum security prisoner who was effectively here for murder because they killed a snitch. Anyway, here we go. Here comes the starving. There's another death. Uh, that's another starvation. 
situation. Seven days without incident. Well, seven days without food. That's what that will do to you as well. But they're not rioting. They're just slowly, calmly dying. <laughs> What's this? Six prisoners say they're well treated. How? Where? <laughs> Where are these prisoners? You, you are starving to death and the danger level is decreasing. How are you feeling that you have been well treated? On what front have you been well treated? It's not like food, unless you're eating each other now. Food, hygiene, exercise, family, recreation, freedom, all at maximum issues. And six people out there are thinking that, hey, you know what? This ain't so bad. This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. Only 11 prisoners have apparently any complaints. Only 11. But they're so suppressed, they don't even want to voice them. This is absolutely stupid. I love it. It's also closed down our intake for fun. Oh, well, five prisoners due for release soon. What an excellent idea. You know what? I think we've actually done a fantastic job and it's probably time for us to uh, actually remove the kitchen entirely so they can't have any food. And you know what? We can probably undo the lockup as well. Just stop all the lockup. There we go. And we can actually start releasing some prisoners. There we go. Look at this. They're ready to release. They've served there for a year so they can just walk out. Fantastic. Look at that. That's wonderful. That's reform, ladies and gentlemen. Reform. Oh my goodness. Let's just scoot off all the dead bodies, the 19 dead bodies of the uh, the non-incidents. Oh, sorry, 20 dead bodies now. 22 dead bodies now. We have six prisoners remaining. Six. Frost, how are you doing? You're not you're not feeling the best, are you? You, you are starting to starve. Well, it's fine, because you can go have your shower, and the shower will really make you feel good. Experience, not so bad, really. Not so bad. Mood, feeling pretty normal, despite having maximum needs for everything excluding environment. Oh, what's this incoming call from the CEO? Yesterday was a very dark chapter in the history of this prison. Far too many people lost their lives here. Make sure nobody else dies today or you will face prosecution. Oops. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> we've only got one prisoner left, and it's Paul Frost. Paul, you've kind of got a tricky situation here where I need you to not starve to death in the next 18 hours. Else apparently what I've done is highly illegal. Oh, now he's really starting to starve. Now it is becoming an issue, but it's just 14 more hours, okay? 14 hours, you can do it. Come on, Paul Frost. Oh, he's having a chat with some family at the moment. That's fine. He best not be telling them about the lack of food he's having, and instead, the really chill and happy time that he's currently experiencing. Right, it's 10 hours in here now. Come on, 9 hours. He hasn't got much health left. I could kind of do with him just eating the scraps off of the table and though he's just passed out due to being unconscious. This is an issue. Uh, can we hire a doctor? Yes. And the doctor can apparently heal him right back up despite the fact that he is still starving. This is excellent news for us and he is now starving yet again but honestly I'll do anything I can just to stop <laughs> being arrested. That's fine. Perfect stuff. Still starving but three more hours to go if we just hit him with that needle to reset his health that's all that matters this is so stupid i love it oh wait we're allowed another death one out of five deaths five deaths maximum oh great we can just get rid of the doctor get rid of all the guards don't need any of them why did we even have guards in the first place it's not like the prisoners could even rebel all right well there we go fantastic i'm afraid that no means you're going to die paul frost but on the plus side of things uh you didn't add to my criminal tally so you're just another classic accidental death What's that? 30 families waiting to visit between 8am and 8pm. I'm sorry, but 30 families to see Paul Frost. Good God, that man must have got around a lot. I mean, 30 families? He's only got two registered children. What, what kind of a man about town was he? Oh my goodness, Paul Frost, legendary, legendary man. <laughs> They've all gone away now. 30 families all tied to one Paul Frost. What an incredible man. Such a shame that he did have to, in fact, starve to death. Oh, F in the chat. So there we have it. This is the most effective way of managing a prison possible because effectively your prisoners will do nothing wrong because they feel that everything is fine even when nothing is fine. This strategy can also be done by just suppressing the prisoners a bunch but this is my more favourite method because it's just silly to imagine that he's having such a calming effect that he is quite simply encouraging the prisoners to just forget that they haven't had food for days and instead put a cheery smile on their face and go, you know what, could be worse could be Welsh. Actually, no, the Welsh people are lovely, some of them. Anyway, that's uh, kind of the end of this prison, but luckily that's not the only prison I have up my sleeve. I also have this lovely bad boy here. Look at this fantastic little prison I've got. It's so cute and fun. Well, kind of. What are we going to do? Well, we need two guards and two cooks, and then we've actually completed a basic detention centre and got ourselves ten grand. Then we need to build ourselves an administration centre, which is actually surprisingly easy. There we go. And now we need to hire a warden and unlock finance through 
bureaucracy? Well, that's actually surprisingly easy because everyone knows the best way to do this is to actually have multiple wardens working on it. So let's quickly sack her and then sack her again and then again. And now we can hire free wardens. One, two, three. There we go. Lovely. And with our fantastic free wardens, uh, we can then immediately start researching finance, which should take five hours and 59 minutes. But thanks to the fact that we have free wardens simultaneously researching this, it's going to go down at a terrifying rate. Remember, this is meant to unlock in six hours and so far not much time has passed. Uh, so there we go. That is one hour and we're 50% of the way through and we're approaching the two hour mark. Uh, it's just coming up now, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Two hour mark and we've just finished finance. Ah, uh, yes. Multiple wardens, speedy research. It's just absolutely lovely. So let's sack um, actually two of our wardens. We're going to need to go back to the default amount just so that we can hire ourselves an accountant. This does actually work with all staff, by the way, which is very useful. And we can pick up cell block A, immediately pass that through and then cell block B and we'll get that one passed through very quickly. But before then, it's time for us to actually intake some prisoners and fill ourselves to capacity. We're going to basically just absolutely flood our prison with a bunch of medium security dudes, 37 of them in fact, and this is going to have fantastic impacts on our prison. Alright, and very soon we'll have our prison labour system set up, which is brilliant because all of our prisoners have arrived, and oh god I've realised we actually need more guards. Yeah, two guards just isn't going to cut it anymore. Uh, we're going to have to try 10 instead. There we go, let's get all those prisoners in and set up. Fantastic stuff. All 53 prisoners have arrived. And in an hour and a half, we'll also have ourselves some lovely... Oh, one prisoner has already died. Let me guess. Yes, of course, he was ex-law enforcement and a snitch. These things just happen. But you will notice uh, we actually just got a bit of cash there because a couple of interesting things were picked up. Yes, we found some stolen needles on the prisoners. What that means is we actually gained a bit of cash, which is lovely for us. Now that we have ourselves prison labor sorted, we can build a lovely laundry room. We can also build a shop if necessary. I mean, we might as well. And there we go. We actually now have our laundry room set up, which means we can actually assign prisoners to work in a laundry room and shop as soon as they're finished, which is brilliant because once they can start working in there, they can start stealing contraband from in there. And stealing contraband is actually what we want our prisoners to do because by stealing contraband, uh, we can start making money off of prisoners stealing contraband. <laughs> Trust me, it just works. You see, in the base game, this would 100% not be allowed to work, but thanks to technical shenanigans, Shenanigans, everything's possible. Oh, and that's another death. Let me guess. Snitch? No, he just overdosed on drugs. Well, that's uh, that's sadly one piece of contraband we didn't get our hands on soon enough. So there we go. Our shop is built and our lovely laundry room is open as well, meaning we can start assigning some prisoners to these jobs. Let's get people working in the shops and the laundry room and the kitchen, even though no one's actually qualified to go in there. Then it's time for us to build the world's biggest cleaning cupboard because uh, we're going to need to start filling it up with prisoners. And there we go. With that room completed, we can make the biggest cleaning cupboard I've ever seen. Cleaning cupboards are brilliant because they just get filled with a bunch of illegal supplies and if you leave them out in the middle of everywhere, it's just perfect. Also, we can assign 24 prisoners to work in this tiny little room, which is uh, great for us. Absolutely brilliant. And there we go. Our prisoners are actually starting to make money because they're working their job. So, as you can see, they're starting to build up a little bit of cash. We've got an absolute army of cleaners running about the prison just tidying the entire thing up. And with the money that they've made, they're actually going to then start going to the shops and buying things, which is very cute. Oh look, they're even getting to go inside all of the staff rooms to steal all of the warden supplies. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a great idea, but oh well, it's what we've got. And now that they've had a hard day's working, ladies and gentlemen, and we have our lovely finance set up, we can see that it's time for us to uh, get a unique source of income from uh, basically stealing from the prisoners. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a shakedown of everything, uh, shake down all sectors, and just get our lovely officers to search. Oh, they found a hammer. Lovely. They found even more stuff. Oh, that's very nice. Basically, the more we find, the more money we get. Oh, cool, a $13 consulting fee. Very nice. There we go, $1 consulting fee and a $7 consulting fee. Fantastic. There we go, money secured, a very successful little hunt. Now, you might be wondering what this consulting fee is. Now, the consulting fee you saw getting added into our balance there, that is the money which we basically receive from finding contraband goods. As you can basically see from our cash flow, we received a decent amount of money, but it wasn't actually anything fantastic. It could be oh so 
so much better, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're going to do is build even more offices and you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, more consulting fees. Because if we receive, say, $1 from each bit of contraband, thanks to our warden, then that's basically $1 every time we find an item. But if we have five wardens, then that's $5 every time we find an item. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. So let's get these offices put down because I've got a very interesting setup I need to build. So there we have it. We have all of these lovely offices. I'm ready to start making some more money off of my fantastic prisoners. I mean, just look at them. They're starting to do these fantastical little jobs and building up little bits of cash of their own. And after all, it's the cash we take off of them which we're actually going to be receiving. And also make sure to build yourselves a visitation room because that is yet another way for us to receive contraband in from outside the prison. More contraband, more good. Oh my goodness, we definitely have a drug problem because we've got about four prisoners OD. Yep, we've just got prisoners overdosing left, right and center. So this is a brilliant time to start a shakedown, ladies and gentlemen. Shaking down just about everything we can. Uh, let's deploy some more guards in here. And actually, I realized we need to get more of our warden just before we actually start this. So let me repeatedly sack our warden so that, yes, we're back down to zero wardens. And now again, minus one, minus two. And I'll just repeatedly sack her until she basically no longer exists. And there we go. She's been sacked over 20 times, meaning I can now hire again another 20 times. Now we have 21 so far Akinovas, uh, which is perfect for us. And the shakedown is well underway, so hopefully we should start seeing some lovely cash coming in. There we go, $71 in cash flow because we discovered a bottle of poison. Um, <laughs> that's actually quite stupid. Oh my goodness, that's very stupid. There's more poison. A couple of clubs have been found. Very good. Let's see what the cash flow comes to. Come on. There we go, $68 consulting fee. Mm, that's the good stuff. Very, very nice. Another successful day working, and you know what that means? It means all sectors get yet another shakedown so that we can just squeeze a little bit more money off of our prisoners. I mean, they're busy overdosing left, right, and center, so we might as well. Why do they just keep drinking all the poison from the bleach cupboard? I, I will never understand why, but you know, it's allowing us to rack up some decent consultancing fees. Oh, and that's six deaths today. Uh, I'm guessing all probably caused by overdosing. So let's get yet another shakedown underway. That man literally just got searched four times and then he had an overdose. This is incredible. But yes, this setup is pretty silly. Um, not just because you can effectively sack the modifier bonus from your various lovely wardens, but mostly so that you can absolutely cheese various things like, say, research. For example, something like legal requires 12 hours to research, but we're on the slowest speed right now, are we? Yep, and it's researching at a terrifying rate. Uh, so let's go now. Uh, it's currently 11 a.m. It's coming up to quarter past and we're currently speeding on by. Uh, we're doing some decent progress on legal. Let's just speed it up. And yes, in under an hour, which is 12 times faster than it actually said, we have completely researched legal. Now let's try education. And once again, it just absolutely yeets on by. And then psychology, that's just going to be done instantaneously. And prison policy, once again, kind of just instantaneously. And finally, micromanagement. Oh, it's lovely. All right, now it's time for yet another shakedown. And right, there we go. More stuff is found. Lovely stuff. That's what you like to see. I mean, if we're spending $2 on getting bleach from our prisoners, we might as well be getting $40 back when we eventually find that they've stolen it. That just seems like the most efficient way of handling things. I mean, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very unique way of running your prison, but certainly it would be much, 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 much easier if instead you're running a forestry prison, because famously, Prison Architect is the greatest forestry tycoon simulator game in the entire known universe. And if you disagree with me, you're just wrong. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end today's video here, and if you have indeed enjoyed it, feel free to give this video a like. It does massively help out the channel, so thank you very much. And if you want to see more very strange videos like this, then do consider subscribing, because that way you'll get yourself a lovely notification every time one of these fantastic adventures happen. As always, ladies and gentlemen, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously, without you, we wouldn't be able to do these fantastic videos on the regular. So thank you very much. It is truly very generous. And if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Trust me, I absolutely love it if you enjoyed today's. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.